Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little watercolour for you. I hope it's going to be fairly short. I never know. I do try my best every time but sometimes these paintings just got a life of their own and they do what they're going to do. Doesn't matter what I want them to do. So anyway let's dive straight in and see what happens. First and foremost, let me just apologize. I've got a, a pretty heavy head cold, so my voice might sound a little bit strange than the norm. I apologize for that in advance. The idea with this little collared dove was to do a very simple bird on a very simple um, background and object that it's standing on. So I used a um, garden spade. Actually, it's my father's garden spade. It's a, it was a lovely old-fashioned type of spade with a wooden top handle, slight curve to it, as you can see, and it, it just led to a very, very simple uh, form. And that allowed me to concentrate on the bird and also to make the background uh, so much simpler and just darker and that would throw the bird out that was the idea behind this is to make everything as simple as possible i did hope that this was going to be a very quick video but it didn't turn out that way as i said just now uh, paintings do have a life of their own and they dictate to you to a point but the drawing as you can see changed a little bit and added a bit here and a bit there i'm using a medium round brush now to uh, get the first layers and this is the first whole layer across the whole of the painting i'm not making it as dark as it's going to be i put the lovely warm gray uh, which was a bit of neutral tint as well in there uh, of the dove itself and i made sure that i preserve the white highlights that were on the right hand side wing and also across to the top of the head and on the left just enough to make sure that I could add uh, pure colors to those later on and I also wanted to preserve the highlights in the top part of the right hand side of the garden spade as well but you can see on this I'm adding all sorts of colors I'm not really worried about whether I go over the spade or or around it I am trying though to keep the darks and the upper side clear of areas that I preserve so I'm going in very very carefully and I did turn the painting upside down at this point and start working on the um, top part and working away from the subject that way the paint wasn't going to run down but if there was any bleeds it would be the gray into the dark and I'm not that worried about that so coming back the other way you can see that we've got that first layer in place i've allowed it to dry i use the hair dryer on it and now i'm going in with the second part there's a lot of uh, darks um, oranges indigos and i like uh, sepias trying to give me a warm dark accent and to the back here and I don't need too much more than this. As long as this dries up fairly dark, the idea is it will isolate the bird, which is in the sun, and it's beautifully lit. And the background becomes, I don't know, less important other than the fact that it frames the whole thing. And that's what makes this painting work, is the fact that the dark and the light contrast each other beautifully. And also don't forget that the dove is predominantly a warm um, sort of cool, I suppose, warm and cool, uh, but a very, very pale violet. And the background has got lots of exciting warm glows of oranges and deeper greens that I've placed in. And I have put in certain colors and mixed them directly on the paper. Now I do know that this is a very well known and preferred uh, method of mixing color. Uh, it makes the colors purer if you can mix them on the paper as opposed to in the palette. In the palette they get quite dirty. And it's some area that in the future I wish to explore that a lot more uh, moving forward of mixing my colors uh, actually on the paper and not in the palette. It's easy to drop back and forget how to do that, but it's exciting because the colors 
have a life of their own when they blend and mix and they don't run always as often or where you quite want them to so it is an exciting process to be able to do that but you get a much better purer uh, mix of color by trying to do it on the paper anyway enough of that because i'm not really doing that in this case so it makes no sense talking about it in this video but you see that i while the paper was still damp and i did use a heavy gray paper it's allowing me to add this really dark indigo and orange mix and i brought some through the bottom there right across so that the two sides of the shovel um you know the background between the two blend and work now i let it run back away from the bird but you can see how wet that paper was then in the glistening from the video lights but at the same time there is this um continuity across the back at the base so the background does look as though it belongs uh, on completely either side of the shovel all right now i'm using some of my um, magenta and my uh, indigo blues and i'm just putting in another warm value of the violet across this bird it will get quite dark in this part because the bird is sort of tucked away from the light in a sense it's rim light so the outer edges need protecting to show the light but where the bird is turned away from the sun then it's going to show a lot more um, sort of shadowy colors and I'm bringing a little bit of warmth a little bit more magenta as I come down the bird's chest and I want to define that because the feathers where the bird's neck is sort of twisted and and tucked in it opens up the feather structure so you see into the feathers and get that much more um, sort of lights and darks happening with the feather structure at that point and of course where the body and the chest is coming down and going into what ineffectively is its tummy uh, and back towards the tail then it again is further away from the light so there'll be that much more definition of shadow there and it also gives a contour to the bird i added some cerulean blue into this side of the wing it wasn't naturally there but i felt that it just added that extra light dimension uh, where the wing is catching the sun now i know that's uh sort of a coolish blue but it, it's sort of reminiscent of sky and light and we associate those so i added that blue in and i felt that it worked quite nicely now i've put the first or i suppose the second layer onto the shovel and i've made it deliberately warm initially with a lot of um, brown tones and they are reacting nicely with the cool values that are sitting at that point in the background so i'm using complementaries but i'm also using uh, them with each other in the sense of warms and cools added a little bit of uh, cooler blue colors uh, at this and i realized that i needed to save a bit of light now it's quite wet so i will go back in there and re-establish that but i'm protecting around the area around the feet and i'm just looking at all these different shapes that i need to display in this um shovel top shovel top handle that's what i meant to say but yeah you can see and it just darkens down with extreme layers going on top of each other warms cools cools warms it's just making the whole thing develop as you really need it to uh, to give the sense of presence uh, in the foreground and something solid for the bird to be sitting on and that's hopefully what i've done i've also used a thing called counter change which is allowing me to have a lighter side of the shovel handle as you can see on the right hand side against all that darkness and the lighter side of the background has got a much darker side of the handle and that's a deliberate ploy and it also helps you to throw the object forward and in presence you can see i'm just establishing that little light shade again and now i allowed that to dry and i'm going in with yet another layer and this i think is pretty much the final layer the characteristic uh colored dove collar uh, i'm putting in now it's the first part and there's quite a bit of warmth a little bit of red went into that just to give a warm accent to the dark 
and that will allow me to go in with a secondary dark color and add uh, further darks to that collar in a little while and you can see as I said I'm darkening up the head so this is the third pass and I build this up in certain developing layers and each time I assess how far I need to go with it how much more needs to be done before I commit I'm actually putting in the lovely little closed eye as it's sort of, I don't know, preening or sleeping. It's sort of, you can imagine it just peacefully sitting there, quite happy, minding its own business and um, no cares. And yeah, I think it worked quite nicely. You can see I put a little deep shadow in that high contrast where it's sort of tucked its beak into its feathers, into its shoulder. And I'm using some of these darks now just to suggest the feathers where they've broken and lifted and they show deeper uh, recesses within the shadows of each feather and down through the center of the chest and almost you can sort of see the chest cavity uh, and going in under the tummy and just a little bit more detail and that's all I'm doing but I'm not being that specific I'm really just adding little bits of color here and there to suggest the darker uh, shadows and a little bit of water went in just to soften that but really and truly it's a case of developing these forms and the colors are blues and they are warm darks so they're neither one nor the other they're swinging from the warm and the cool and I think that's important too I established a little bit more of the blue on the wing and now I'm putting the feet in and I decided to go in pretty dark but I suddenly realized that they didn't look quite um, authentic so I started to lose that and wet the area up and I changed my mind I darkened off the area uh, into the base of the body and also into the top of the spade and the idea being that having wet it up having disturbed that pigment I could now draw into that dark uh, area at the top of the handle and do the negative space as it were and put those feet in by dragging off some of the material and make the feet appear lighter as they should do and not as dark marks so it was a little bit of a, a u-turn but I think it worked out and once this dries up I'm able to uh, establish those feet shapes or the toes of the bird a little bit better and then establishing the darks a little uh, more firm as it were just going back into the top and the rough around the neck just one or two darker marks that uh, I didn't get in in the first place just adding a few tweaks and bits here and there and we are pretty much finished with this I'm sort of coming to the end I'm checking all the little areas that I want to and establishing the fact that you know all those bits of detail are there bit more to suggest the wing and a little bit of depth over the other side too to establish that other wing it was a little bit uh, left needing and a bit more to the eye just going over the the collar shape you know the, the display of feather uh, that gives the bird its beautiful name and yeah I'm just seeing where I need to put in one or two touches but essentially we are done and I'm getting to the point now where I just want to um, round this off just go in with a few darks around the toes as I said just to give them a bit more firm stability and make them look a little bit more real as it were and yeah what can I say um, I'm getting ready now to sign the picture and be happy with it and get ready about thinking of doing my next one so I will start start that process in earnest all the best for now and enjoy okay so now the big reveal let's just take this tape off this is my favorite part Okay, everybody, it's finished. I enjoyed painting this little collar dove for you. Um, it's just a, a sweet little subject, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then click the uh, like button and give it a thumbs up. And also, 
uh, share it with your friends and let others know that the video is there to watch and enjoy. And I say this every week to you, if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really does help me to know that there are more and more people out there adding their names to the subscriber list and enjoying the content that I'm creating and putting out there on my channel. So yeah, if you're not already, press that subscribe button. And on that subject, if you are interested in what I do and enjoy some of these videos, the time lapses, etc., if you want to see real time versions and other content, then pop over to my Patreon page. It costs you nothing to have a look, but check it out. There's a lot of full time videos there. I'm adding content all the time to it. And if it's something that interests you, for a couple of cups of coffee or one cup of coffee a month, then you get the chance to. Uh, actually see so much more and you have a direct link through my Facebook community uh, to engage with me uh, in the future on work that you're doing either as a direct result of what I'm doing on these channels or indeed the work that you're doing on your own in your own studios so have a look and if you want to uh, get involved the details are below click on those and pop along to the Patreon and you'll be so so welcome and on that note let me just say um yeah <laughs> what can i say yeah just enjoy and i'll catch each and every one of you next friday in next week's video tutorial and uh, happy painting everybody all the best take care bye bye for now